without much suspense, I did not pass my SE Lato exam on my first attempt, and that stinks. I wish I had gotten this out of the way on my first try. I tried really hard. It wasn't this time. I'll, I'll keep pushing forward, but I really hope that with this video, I show you guys an analysis of my study prep, how much time I allocated for each subject, what went well, what did not go so well, and my plan going forward, especially with this new CBT exam. Let's go. I'm about to take you to my study log spreadsheet, but before that, I just wanted to say to everyone out there who took the exam, you did it, including myself. We studied so many hours, hundreds of hours, and whether we passed or not, just accepting this challenge and going to face this beast is a huge accomplishment and we should pat ourselves on the back because it's really not a feat that many engineers do. Hundreds of engineers took this exam and let me tell you, about 80%, maybe 70% of the um, engineers who took the exam, including myself, are very frustrated right now because we didn't pass the exam. If you passed, congrats, I'm really, really happy for you. I wish I had passed too, but for for now, I think what I can do is look at this failure and tell myself and tell others out there that, hey, this exam does not define you, it does not define me as a person or as an engineer. There are a lot of factors that go into passing the exam or even taking the exam, so don't get discouraged if you didn't pass. I know my buddy Rich from Team Castava, another YouTube channel. If you haven't checked out his channel, make sure you check it out. Uh, we started this journey together, taking this exam. We didn't pass gravity the first time. We passed gravity the second time. We didn't pass lateral this first try, but hopefully we're gonna knock this out on our second try. And guess what? If we don't, it's okay. We're gonna keep pushing forward and we're going to make this structural engineering community, a more collaborative environment. And whether it's online or in person, we're here together and we're gonna get this out of the way. Rich, if you're watching this, we got this. We got this, man. This is a word of encouragement to you and to all of those who follow our channels and many other structural engineering channels, maybe not so many, um, out there. Let's just keep pushing forward, guys. Now let's cut to the chase and see what worked well and what clearly didn't work so well that made me not pass this exam the first time around. All right, guys, I studied a total for the SE 635 hours, and that's combining gravity, which I did 356 hours and 30 minutes um, total, and for lateral, I did 278 hours and 30 minutes, but that was not enough for the first try. My scores were for the morning, 25 out of 40, and for the afternoon, two A's. So acceptable, acceptable, and then improvement required, and then the last one was unacceptable. For the morning, I that's the one that I really felt it could go either way when I walked out of the exam, because I guessed on a lot of bridge questions, a lot of bridge questions, maybe, I don't know, between six and eight, maybe six and nine questions, I had to guess because one, I didn't have time. And as you can see here from the breakdown, I didn't spend a lot of time studying for bridges. I left that subject to be like the last one for me to study. And guess what? When you do that, those last subjects, you end up not studying as much depending on how your study schedule goes. Um, so I did this breakdown here of each subject and you can see that the winner is seismic. I am not in a seismic region uh, here in Florida, so I wanted to brush up a lot on seismic and there's just a lot more content on seismic than wind, for example. So I spent a lot of time on seismic um, relatively, a lot of time on wind, and then when it, you see here, when it goes down to, to bridges, not, not as much. Also a good amount of time for practice exams and reviewing the practice exams. I took a course from AEI, which is this website right here. I highly recommend it, guys. 
even though I did not pass this exam, I still think that AEI has the best SE exam course out there. I am not an affiliate of AEI, but I truly believe that their material is top notch. I haven't reviewed many other courses out there, but just from talking to people and doing some research on other courses, I think AEI really has the best material currently on the market. I know it's not cheap um, to take a course. That's the right the route I went, and I think it was worth it even though I didn't pass the exam. Before I actually decided to take the AEI course, I watched all the lectures from Professor Dirk Bondi's YouTube channel, and I'm gonna show it to you here. I pretty much went through this entire playlist. It was a really good playlist. Real life examples, whether you're taking a course or not, I think Dirk Bondi has a great teaching style and his YouTube lectures are free, so go for it. Now, if we go back here to my study log, you see that I have this planned column here and then the actual. It's because when I developed this schedule, I thought I was going to spend only about 205 hours studying for this exam. I ended up studying 278 hours because AI has so much material. And even with 278 hours, maybe I covered about 90% of the course. That was the last 10% that I didn't have time to cover. So know that, yes, it's a great course, but it takes a lot of time to go through the entire material. A lot of the time that I spent was essentially watching videos. I have a little table here that shows how many videos they have, and I think it's 114 videos. Yes, 114 videos total that they have on their course. And some videos are 40 minutes, some videos are an hour, an hour and 20 minutes, 30 minutes, so it varies. But you're not gonna find like a 10 minute video, for example. So 114 videos, that's, that's a lot. Um, so if you're planning to take their course, know that you're gonna have to put in a lot of work, which is good. They have a lot of material. Now, if we go back here, I'm just going to scroll down through this list and you can see I had some trips already planned. That's why I think it's really important for us to plan out a schedule, develop a schedule before we go into taking such a big task. So I'm not going to bore you with all the details of this list. I'm just going to scroll down here, show you when I took the practice exam from AEI and then from NCES. You see here that what I had planned was to take the practice exam from AEI a lot sooner. I was hoping that I would have taken it here in at the end of September, but I was not able to take it really until early October. And that's because I was still trying to get through the entire material. And honestly, a lot of time was spent watching videos. I watched them at double the speed. I know some people watch at one and a half or even regular speed, but even watching the videos at double speed, it was still hard to try to catch up with all the homework, all the quizzes, mini exams, all the different things that they have within their, their course. And then I took the NCES practice exam because I took it so close to when the actual exam was, I didn't have a whole lot of time to review what I got wrong on the NCES practice exam. So that's one thing I want to change going forward. And speaking of going, going forward, let me show you now the plan that I have for my new schedule to take the exam in April of next year. Now, the exam is computer-based, so my way of studying will be different, and I don't have to take both the depth and the breadth at the same time. What I did, and let me know if you guys think differently and would do it in a different way, but I'm going to take the depth first, the exam day, is April 17th of 2024. And then after the depth, I hope to take the breath maybe a couple months after or something like that. I haven't signed up for the breath yet. And my reasoning for that is because the depth is only offered twice per year, still because NCES is still building up their depth questions. So they're not offering it year round just yet. So I want to give my best shot for the depth and hopefully hopefully, Lord willing, get this out of the way in April. And then I have the 
whole year essentially i hope to take the the breath in a couple months after that but i'll have more time for the breath and i can properly study bridges for example which is one subject that i didn't cover very well on top of that another reasoning is because i feel like when i study for the depth i'm automatically learning the breath concepts for example if i'm going through a full-on brace frame steel brace frame design I'm going through the steps of the connections, of the column, of the beam design, and all these things. But then in the breath, it just asks for one specific element that I would already know if I studied the full design. I'd rather study the full design for the whole system rather than specific elements. I feel like I, I learn better that way. All right, so here you see that there are a lot of zeros here. I essentially just took today, for example, and did every single day just populated every single day until the exam day on april 17th now one of the major things that i'm changing here is the fact that i don't want to watch rewatch all the ai videos they took me a lot of time and i learned better by solving problems so because i already watched their videos i want to now focus mainly on solving their quizzes, homework, assignments, and all that stuff. And then besides that, I want to focus even more on actually getting familiar with the codes because I cannot take my notes into the exam anymore. So I have to be very familiar with where to find things on the different codes. And lastly, that's a little bit of what I did my second time around taking gravity. My second time around, I pretty much just focused on my weak areas from the previous exam. The way that I studied for the whole breath portion was by taking practice exams and reviewing the practice exams. So I hope to do it slightly similar um, this time around, but different because I have to restudy everything to get familiar with all the code sections on where to find specific things. So you see here that I have some homework assignments already that I want to tackle. Now, all these zeros here is because of the holiday break and I'm going to my home country for a couple weeks. And then after that, I'm planning to hit the books and redo the seismic homework assignments from AI uh, because seismic, I think, is such a long subject that I will need to devote a lot of time. I am flipping the schedule a little bit. I'm not thoroughly following the AI course because like I said, I want to get familiar with the codes and starting with steel. Steel was the one question that I got unacceptable. So I want to focus on special moment frames, intermediate moment frames, ordinary moment frames, BRBs, all the steel stuff. Um, and the seismic design manual has great examples. I will have access to that during the exam. So I want to go through as many examples within that manual as possible because then I'll be able to refer to them during the exam as well. So I allocated a lot of time for, for steel and I want to get it out of the way initially right after I get through the main seismic concepts because I don't want to leave steel um, to be one of the last subjects like I did last time and then not, and then not have enough time to cover everything that I want to cover. And then after steel, um, for concrete, I'm going to study in a similar way to what I did for gravity. I used ACI SP17, which is the Concrete Design Handbook. They have great examples for ordinary moment frames, intermediate moment frames, special moment frames, shear walls. So all the main concrete elements for lateral design. And I plan to go through those and then go through the AI content for their depth um, problems. After that, using mostly AI for wood and masonry. Again, not spending a whole lot of time on those two topics. I'm trying to focus more on steel and concrete, as well as practice exams. As you'll see here, my practice exam now is only five and a half hours because that's how long the exam will be for the depth. And then reviewing that practice exam from AI after that, taking the NCES practice exam and reviewing that over and over again. And then I left some time here as just a buffer because I don't know if I'm going to be able to follow this entire schedule to a T 
and there may be some miscellaneous topics that I'm not thinking about now that I may need to study later. And then exam day will be on April 17th. So if we go to this summary table here, you see that I'm allocating a lot of time for steel, a lot of time for concrete and seismic loads, not a whole lot of time for wind, and not a whole lot of time for wood and masonry. We'll see how it goes when I get into those subjects. I feel more comfortable with them based on the previous exam and also based on experience, but we'll see. I just want to, again, focus on my weak areas and then let's see when I take a practice exam how I do and hopefully I'll cover those subjects a little bit more if I don't do well on them when I take practice exams. We have a grand total of 152 hours and a half this time around, let's see if I can do it. Hold me accountable, guys. I am not shooting for the stars here. I'm not trying to do 200 plus hours. I'm trying to live a life as well uh, at the same time as studying for this exam. I just really hope that it'll be enough. And if it is or if it is not, I'll be back here reporting what worked well and what didn't so that you guys can also plan your studies and benefit from this in-depth overview of my experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're studying lateral design, check out my wind load playlist. I'm dropping in some videos on wind loads and it's been great to just find different nuances of the code and trying to solve real life examples. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.